Hurricane Julia nearing landfall in Nicaragua tonight on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 9th. Right now, Julia is the main event in the Atlantic, the Southwest Caribbean, uh, set to make a landfall soon and has now reached hurricane status, Category 1. Tropical Storm Balita also in the Southern Indian Ocean, another early storm to the season there. It's the fourth one on our count so far. We are Code Orange. So the Atlantic obviously, day 131 of hurricane season, uh, there's no other areas of interest but Julia will keep our hands full enough for the next 24 hours, it's set to make landfall in Nicaragua late tonight into the early hours of tomorrow morning, latest estimates suggest perhaps a 2 or 3 a.m. landfall. In the eastern Pacific, one area of interest could stem from part of Julia's energy and possibly become a tropical cyclone as it ventures towards the northwest off the coast of southern Mexico. No other areas of interest right now though, on day 148 of hurricane season. In the western Pacific, we have two areas of interest, one very broad formation area near the Mariana Islands, over them in fact, that could develop as it heads towards the northwest, and another one that's likely to swing through the Philippines fairly soon. It's going to be a big disorganized mess though all across the west Pacific in the next few days. And in the southern hemisphere, a much more simpler scenario, Balita there, which is peaking probably right now as a tropical storm, and is set to turn post-tropical as it gets... Uh, mixed up in a frontal system uh, in around two days time so a little bit more time left for Balita but not much. Let's check the latest satellite imagery this is what the Atlantic looks like right now and take a look at all of the influence that Julia has brought itself across the southwestern Caribbean Sea covering a very large area uh, with its cloud cover extending from Colombia all the way up towards Guatemala and the eastern part of Mexico and Belize. The central core looking decent on that imagery. Eastern Pacific, also partly dominated by Julia. To the west there, a little disturbance, but nothing expected. Uh, it's mainly from the southern bands, probably, of Julia that we might start to see a new system begin to develop. That's not to mention that Julia itself could enter the Eastern Pacific in the next few days as well, and last for a little bit longer. So here it is. What we are expecting is that Julia's energy will start to dissipate over the... Uh, over the uh, central part of America and then some of its energy will be transferred southwards to form another system but here's the latest satellite imagery it's looking fairly decent it could have looked a lot better so we're a little bit thankful that this wasn't a category 2 or maybe even approaching category 3 for landfall it is a category 1 and it's probably going to stay that way we expect landfall to be maybe 80 or 85 miles per hour at this point and as mentioned it's probably got about uh, seven or eight hours left until it does so uh, but looking decent with that shape there uh, and not much else to say as we move looking eastwards this is the rest of the Atlantic looking very quiet there nothing on the horizon and in the rest of the eastern Pacific looking pretty quiet there too but certainly decent cloud tops in Julia and its uh, structure is looking better it established the central core on radar not long ago and so it is steaming ahead uh, now a category one is the Western Pacific and you can already see the beginnings of what might be this next setup. A few little disturbances there gathering rotation and trying to get themselves organized. Uh, the one at the moment which we're most watching I suppose is the one near Guam. That's probably one that's going to form first but something approaching the Philippines towards the end of the three to five day period is likely to develop and move into the South China Sea. There's the Indian Ocean and you can see Tropical Storm Balita down there although latest imagery shows that maybe it's already starting to lose itself a little bit with that uh, with those cloud tops looks like it's being sheared to the southeast there and in the Australian region things looking fairly quiet a little flare up there at the Australian top end but elsewhere looking fairly quiet a frontal system moving through the east coast and another one moving through Fiji and that could spawn potentially a system that might become a borderline subtropical cyclone in the next three days so keep looking in that area for probably a bit of interest 
Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific are fairly warm, pushing 30 degrees in a few locations off the coast of Mexico and widespread 28. In the Atlantic, also very warm SSTs, where Julia is right now around 29 degrees Celsius, a little bit of 30 still existing off the coast of Cuba and in the main development region at low latitude, uh, but no storms over those areas right now. Northern Gulf temperatures are starting to recede, as are the uh, the Gulf Stream uh, temperatures starting to decrease a little bit. Indian Ocean, uh, right on the coast of the Bay of Bengal in the northern part, 30 degrees Celsius waters. Uh, where that storm is right now, Belita is entering cooler waters now, probably down to 26 I would say. And in the western Pacific, ahead of these two potential storms shortly, we're looking at 28 to 30 degrees Celsius uh, sea surface temperatures, so still plenty of uh, fuel um, to sustain um, significant and uh, extended tropical cyclone development. And looking at the anomalies, the La Nina effect still very prevalent and possibly intensifying once again with those very cold SST anomalies in the eastern part of the Pacific and the equatorial region. In the tropics though, slightly below average there as well. The Atlantic simmering down a little bit, but still generally above average and the western Pacific above average pretty much all around, apart from in the Yellow Sea. Oceanic heat content has been an interesting one because Julia traced over the only part of the Caribbean that had low values there um, and it's not going to count for much as it approaches landfall because the, uh, the depth of the water isn't that uh, deep and in the eastern Pacific there fairly low values except in the Gulf of California western Pacific still doing its usual best with high oceanic heat content in the Philippine Sea Let's check some computer models then. This is what the Atlantic looks like, and there's Julia making landfall. I don't think GFS fully caught on to its uh, strength now, uh, but it certainly didn't call for much more strengthening, maybe five miles per hour at most, and possibly surviving into the uh, Eastern Pacific. Let's just watch again there. You can see its center. Yep, it does survive there. Still has tropical depression for quite a while, and then uh, decimates itself there in the Gulf of Tehuantepec, and possibly from its remnants, probably not the same storm but another system may be off the coast of Mexico. Western Pacific during this time this is the five-day period and you can see a system forming there north of the Mariana Islands and racing off towards the west around a general low pressure system and it's all got loads of storms floating around here look at all those forming towards the end of the period over the open west pack and in the South China Sea possibly two storms there and possibly two storms in the open waters that is the potential for five new storms in the next five Five days will that happen I don't think so uh, but interesting to see nonetheless especially so close up I continue to watch the two that we've marked more than anything else though and here is the precipitation expectations now for the part for, the, for Central America. It's gone down slightly for quite a few places, which is welcome news, but we're still expecting quite a few areas to receive 10 inches of rain, that's 250 millimeters, particularly in the western part of Nicaragua, including the capital Managua, and along the coast of El Salvador and possibly Honduras and into parts of Guatemala, we could be looking at 10 inches of rain or more. Now that's mainly denoted by those red areas. You'll also so note later on that seven day period even further west along the coast of Mexico high rainfall amounts there as well from probably another tropical disturbance if not maybe a tropical storm but in the interim we're really looking at Nicaragua for some of those worst rainfall amounts in the longer range, this is what the East Pack is showing up, that next storm, which could become a hurricane there and actually stops their stalls and then sort of, well, does it want to go east? No, it's still stalling there for a very long time and weakens then turns east. Um, and in the Gulf there, possibly a little remnant of Julia there as well that I'm seeing. Yep, that might be a little remnant there that tries to reform but ultimately fails whilst that tropical storm uh, really isn't very it's steered very much in the eastern Pacific look at the west pack I don't know what's going on in the South China Sea but there's a tropical storm there and the storm that we were tracking first eventually becomes a typhoon and hits Taiwan another system off to the right hand side stays out to sea possibly multiple systems so odds are that at least one of these systems will form probably two and we might be in for a little busy period here again in the western pacific and just at the end there another system forming in the south china sea as well and i think moving towards luzon 
Well, that's all the important stuff done with. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our current products, including full season and individual storm animations, up for request. Also, our still waiting for Hone t-shirt is still up for grabs because we haven't seen a Hone yet. In the silly range, we do have a long range threat from the Indian Ocean and you can see this rather strong cyclone approaching the coast of India. We saw similar things on other tropical weather bulletins in days past. It's still in fantasy land at the moment in terms of the distance out from where we are right now. But I'll keep watching if you're in this area to see if it ends up speeding towards us, towards the um, more closer time periods. But that's just something to note there, a landfall, if I'm not mistaken, not far from Visakhapatnam. Uh, so a potential strong landfall. In the Western Pacific during that extra long range period, uh, more general messiness and possibly another storm forming there. So if the GFS is to be fully believed, which it isn't, we could be looking at maybe seven or eight tropical storms by the end of that period. There's another one in the South China Sea that becomes a typhoon. So quite remarkable there from the GFS. Um, uh, climatological models earlier in the season were suggesting a heavily loaded late season. So maybe it's time for the Western Pacific to shine in terms of spewing out named storms. Uh, but at the moment, I'm still not convinced. Well, on this day, on October 9th, 1987, Hurricane Ramon was a very powerful storm out in the Eastern Pacific, possibly underestimated when it reached its Category 4 peak. There's a satellite image. We also had Tropical Depression 13L, which was forming on this day in the Southwest Caribbean. That's quite ironic. Um, and that was to become, I think that one was Tropical Storm Floyd. I think that became a Category 1 hurricane as it sweeped up towards Florida and off towards the Northeast. So that's what happened on this day 35 years ago. My goodness, that is a long time now. Well, back to today's naming lists. Next up in the Atlantic now is Carl. In the Eastern Pacific, we're still waiting for Roslyn. And in the Central Pacific, yep, it's still out there somewhere in the depths of time. It's Hone somewhere on list one sometime soon. In the Western Pacific, next up is Sonka in the North Indian Ocean. Our next name there is Citrang. 73 storms have formed so far this year, and with just over two months to go, we look on track to reaching the average 92 storms per year that we've received from 1960 to 2020. In the Australian region, the next name is Darien still, and in the Southwest Indian Ocean now, it's Chaniso. And in the South Pacific, next stop is Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>